Good morning and welcome back to EV Motoring. I'm Joe. It's negative five degrees outside and what better thing to do than to take the Tesla Model 3 on a range test. We have the 2023 Tesla Model 3 standard range. This is with the LFP batteries. Those are the new iron phosphate batteries. I'll have more videos about that uh, in the future. Have it uh, plugged in here to my V-Box charging up and um, it's at 100%, headed outside overnight, so it's nice and cold, but as, as I would on a road trip or leaving for anything in general, I have it pre-conditioning. That's how I've done all my other range tests, and I think that's the most fair because if you were at a hotel, you would pre-condition the interior and battery, get it all warm and toasty before you unplug in the morning. So I think this is the best case, showing the best results of what would actually happen uh, with using the car. It's uh, sun is about to rise here pretty soon, so I want to hit the road. Got a busy day today with work and everything else. Car is completely disgusting, so I apologize for that. But at these temperatures, obviously can't run it through a car wash. But now let's hop inside and uh, see what we, see what settings we have set up, see what the temperature's set at, and uh, get the trip gauge reset. Okay, some really quick facts about the car. As I mentioned, 2023 Model 3 rear wheel drive, you know, single motor standard range. Approximately a 60 kilowatt hour battery. And like I said, charged up to 100% here. There we are, charged to 100%. Rated range is 269 miles right now, according to the car. Go into my trip gauge. There we go, cold weather range test. I have that reset, so... That's ready to collect all the data and climate. As with the other range test, it's set to 72 degrees on auto, fan speed on low, and heated seat on low. So yeah, let's hit the road and we'll uh, check in every 25%. So I think I forgot to mention, this is a 75 mile per hour range test. That's how what I've done for all of my range tests. A lot of people seem to do 70 mile per hour range tests. Believe it or not, the five miles per hour actually does make a, a somewhat of a significant difference, at least with most cars that I've tested already. The reason I do that is 70 might be fine for, you know, the East Coast or, you know, whatever in a metro area, but here in the, here in the Midwest, the speed limits are typically 70, 75. And then when you get out to the West, it's 80 mile per hour speed limit. So I just thought it's a little more useful to get a little better data on how the car performs at a little higher speed. And hopefully that's more usable to somebody that buys the car in a place that has higher speed limits. Another thing to note with the, uh, when the car's battery is this full, you can see the little dots on the left side of the power line right here. That's uh, signifying that the car cannot use the full regen. That's because we're charged to 100%. But you can see that we do have the full power. There's been many times where the car sits outside in really cold temperatures and, and I don't have a precondition, I'm just in a hurry to go in the morning and I have no regen because the battery is so cold it does not want to accept charge uh, to do regen. It's got to heat itself up a little bit before it can accept uh, regenerative braking. So the weather right now is negative five degrees according to the weather app and according to my watch, which I think is connected to the same app essentially. Uh, it'll range, it should warm up to about positive one degree by the time this test is over. So still pretty cold weather. And more importantly, the wind is only a four mile per hour wind, which is pretty pretty ideal, pretty lucky because normally when we get these cold temperatures around here in Chicagoland, we usually get a lot of wind that accompanies it. So nice that we're gonna get some pretty low conditions and really show just more or less what the temperature is doing to the car. Another thing is because we do a loop style test through the magic of video editing, I'll pop that in right here and show the route. So I drive out towards Rockford, and then I drive south for a little bit, circle around back north, and then back east to Chicagoland. So any wind is virtually negated because I do a full loop on this test, and that should avoid any uh, inconsistencies.
We are down to 75%. It's down to negative nine degrees out here by Marengo. We've gone 41 miles using 14 kilowatt hours of energy. So it looks like the battery is only gonna give us 55 kilowatt hours of energy to be able to use, but stay tuned. Uh, this is my first time range testing this vehicle. Here they have this nice energy graph that shows how the power has been consumed. So 22% has gone to driving the car and then a little over two and a half percent has gone to the climate. So nice to see all this data here. Great that the car provides all of it and I don't have to kind of reverse engineer or calculate to try to estimate what each of them is. I will say uh, I would have expected a little bit more range. So at 41 miles, that puts us right at about 140 or 165 miles. I was hoping to get 175 to 180 out of this vehicle, but it is a small battery. So um, stay tuned and we'll check back in at 50%. down to 50%, just looped around, starting to head back home. Says I'll arrive at home with 6%. I'm pretty sure that's a little on the uh, high side, but we'll see as we approach. Gone 78 miles using 28 kilowatt hours. So yeah, we're right on pace to get right about 160 miles out of the battery, basically. It shows here that we've uh, used 47% of the energy for driving and two and a half percent of the energy for climate. So I'll check back in again in another 25%. We are down to 25%. Temperature is negative 11. Oh, now it just jumped to negative 10 degrees. We've gone 116 miles using 41 kilowatt hours. Energy we've used just about 70% uh, for driving and three and a half percent for climate. So doing pretty well. I'll be interested to see when I do the warm weather. I, I feel like this number seems just, just a little bit off. To say that we've only use three and a half percent of the battery for climate it's kind of hard to believe i mean it is a heat pump but i would think in warm weather we'll get way more range than this so it'll be interesting to see when you know a few months from now when i'm able to do the warm weather range test how this car performs but other than that we'll uh jump back in when we get down to single digits to 5%, just a couple miles to go. Uh, what I did is I routed to my nearby Meyer store instead of the supercharger that's at the lot. Um, I don't think it should be a problem that it, I'm pretty sure the Tesla, when it's at a very low state of charge, won't precondition the battery anyway, because it knows that it, you don't have energy to spare. But I didn't want it to, uh, I didn't want to take any risks. I didn't want it to precondition or do anything like that if, if I could avoid it. So I should arrive at Meyer with around 2%. Uh, as soon as, you know, I'll check back in as soon as we get there and we'll see what the total was for the trip. Just pulling into the supercharger right now. Let's uh, jump in and see all the data. So the car started limiting power at 4%. So you see these little dots that are showing up here in this picture. All the warnings of battery very low. Uh, 2% arrival, temperatures warmed up a little bit here around home, but it was negative nine to negative 11 most of the drive. And here's the number, 156 miles with 53 kilowatt hours consumed, 
I'll convert the watt hours per mile to kil miles per kilowatt hour. So I think we could have gone a couple extra miles. The problem is just there wasn't, I wouldn't have been able to make it to a charger if I'd gone to the next exit. So uh, I think it's fair to assume we could have gotten right around 159 miles. Uh, I think it's a, a little bit less than I was hoping to get, but still very usable at the same time, considering how small the battery is. Here's the consumption. 97.9% of the battery has been used, 40% more than what the EPA rated range, uh, we've used 40% more than what the EPA thinks we should have. So 91.4% of it went to driving, 4.4% went to climate, and everything else is 2.1%. Not sure what's considered everything else. Then it has some data over here saying that if we'd gone below 70 miles per hour, if I had inflated the tires a little bit higher, which I don't recommend in these kind of temperatures. And then it shows the hills equaled out because we had a, a round trip journey. So 5.6% was used going uphill, but then we saved 5.6% going downhill. So great to see all this data available in the Tesla. Just plugged the car in right away. It's uh, throwing an air at, or um, a tip to me that if I navigated to the supercharger, it would have preconditioned. Didn't want to do that since I was doing the range test. But right away speeds at ripped right up to 130 kilowatts here at 3%. It should continue to warm the battery and eventually get up to 170, but great to see these speeds uh, at, at a low state of charge. These are With that, that's a wrap for the cold weather range test in the 2023 LFP battery standard range rear wheel drive Tesla Model 3. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think of 159 miles. Do you think that it should, you thought it would have gone farther? Do you think this is acceptable considering how extreme these conditions are? Love to hear all your thoughts down below and uh, like the video if you found this content helpful. Stay tuned for the uh, warm weather range test that'll be coming whenever we eventually get warm weather around here. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you're looking forward to more content, not just here with the Tesla, but many other EVs and many other car reviews coming to the channel. So again, if you found this content helpful, it really helps the channel grow and I really appreciate all you guys have uh, done and helped this channel grow to where it is right now. And, uh, you know, I can't believe very thankful for where we are. But until next time, take care.